Oh, see. So, how's Cliff Jumper? Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my rag, my gal. Sunday, you kissed my wife. Baby, my heart's on fire. We review another figure from the Hasbro R.E.D. series. These are not Transformers at all, just action figures based on Transformers characters. Since no transformation engineering is required, these figures are free to more accurately represent their on-screen renditions. At least, that's the theory. We already went over Generation 1 Megatron, which was based on his old cartoon animation model. But this R.E.D. figure is based on the 2010 Transformers Transformers Prime series, a CGI-based show that was made when Hasbro drunkenly thought they could carry an entire cable network channel with two or three original shows buried under an avalanche of 1980s reruns. That experiment was a dismal failure, but Transformers Prime was actually an okay series. It ran for three seasons and one DVD movie before the production crew ran out of gas and gave up to replace it with a lamer, lower quality follow-up series, Robots in Disguise. One of the main characters in Transformers Prime was R.C., the token female Autobot that turned into a motorcycle. This R.C. was loosely based on Generation 1 R.C., who had a Princess Leia-style hairdo and turned into a pink car, because, you know, She's a girl, and girls like pink. Setting aside the bewildering conundrum of assigning gender to a race of sexless robots, R.C. became a well-liked character on her own merits. Her on-screen CGI model bore only passing resemblance to the actual toy figure. Even with more modern engineering, they couldn't make her screen accurate. But that's what the R.E.D. series is here to fix, seemingly. And they have brought us a figure that ditches the alt mode in favor of CGI model conformity. See the figure inside the box through this window with character art below. Take a gander at the accessories through the side panel, and studio shots of the figure and its features on the back. The other side panel just links to the artwork on the front, so let's open the box and see if they did a decent job of this. <laughs> Out of box, R.E.D. Series R.C. comes with two blade weapon accessories to plug into the forearms. She comes with a left and right hand that is made with curled fingers for gripping action, and a left and right clenched fist accessory. Two special effects accessories to slide onto the ends of the blade accessories for swishy swishy action. Two gun weapon accessories meant to plug into the wrists. And a rough and ragged Energon cube accessory. And this is RC out of box. She's got all these spiky bits and protrusions right down to the metal cuffs on her wrists. The little spike on her forehead. Her angel wingadings. And even the wheels embedded in her back and on the insides of the shins. Also intact are her knee spikes, the weirdly long and tapered feet. R.C., like the other figures in this line, is made of the cheaper, softer, quasi-rubber plastic that isn't completely hard, but not completely soft either. It feels more like the hard rubber of a car tire, or one of those pencil erasers that's gotten really old and stale. As such, this figure has a more fragile feel to it, because you will worry about bending and breakage, especially around the joints, because some of them look dangerously narrow. And since the plastic is softer, R.E.D.R.C. has some detail that appears blurry and fuzzy, simply because the plastic can't hold a sharp edge. But it does appear more detailed than the R.E.D. figures which were based on the Generation 1 cartoon, simply because the Transformers Prime models were a lot more intricate. On close inspection, you can appreciate the effort that was taken. The details around the face are sharper, and she even looks like she has bright blue eyes. Even the lips are painted, the little hussy. Though there are other sections that don't look as crisp, particularly the gold-painted parts near the wrists, the head crest, and on the shins. 
The narrower parts on the figure are more flexible, which includes anything that looks vaguely spiky. The angel wings on my figure are more curling outwards once removed from the box, simply by reason of the more rubbery plastic. But take a hairdryer or a heat gun, use it to carefully warm and soften the plastic, then bend it to its desired shape and re-cool. In this manner, I got the angel wings straightened out. Luckily, nothing else appeared overly out of shape. This loincloth is a separate piece, which jostles slightly, but thankfully doesn't block any of the articulation. And for some reason, they made it so you can pry off the breastplate. Why they felt this was necessary, I have no idea. Because RC never did this on the show. We can only assume that, like comic book artists, the engineers at Hasbro are all dateless losers who wanted to prove that RC doesn't have ro-boobs. To their credit, they even did go so far as to include molded detailing both on the inside under the breastplate and on the inside of the breastplate itself, reattached by means of this peg and hole, and cover her shame. As with other figures that use this kind of rubber, like the Black series, or the Ghostbusters Plasma series, or the Marvel Legends figures, the rubber has a tendency to get a bit sticky, especially when you try to remove or manipulate the hands or other accessories. To utilize the hand accessories, it's a good idea to try to loosen up the joints first, by gently nudging them until you feel them start to loosen, until it reaches a point where you can flex them safely. When swapping out the hand accessories, don't be tempted to pull and yank the fists out of their wrist accessories, otherwise you might break the little plastic peg that holds it in. Safest way is to grip the forearm firmly, then grip the fist or hand firmly, and then just kind of worry it back and forth with a gentle twisting action until it comes out. You can see how teeny tiny and narrow this peg is and how dangerous it would be to yank. Then take the replacement fist accessory, place the peg into the hole and repeat the process with a gentle back and forth action until it pushes into the peg hole and you will feel it hold in place. Much ado has already been made of these hand accessories, which have curled fingers with a hole in it as if they were meant to hold accessories. But none of the accessories that come with RC will grip in these fingers. Not the guns, not the blades, not even the other hands. You 3D printers can fill in the gaps by making your own accessories. Underneath each of RC's forearms, you will see this tiny slot and groove. The blade accessory is meant to insert. Take this protruding tab and insert it into the groove. Be gentle, because it's very thin. You will feel it push and hold into place until the blade is flush against the forearm. And this will give RC a TV show accurate slashy slashy action. Be very careful and delicate when pulling out as well. Even gentle handling has caused stress to appear on the plastic of my blades. I worry that pushing them in and out too much would cause this tab to snap and make the blade worthless. Out of box you may find that some of the wrists on the hand accessories are frozen in place. Before you plug them into the wrists and try bending them, it's advised that you loosen up this peg while it's still lying loose. It will eventually reach a point where you feel that you can move it back and forth without it sticking. Same for the gun accessories. This one, the peg is so frozen in place that I don't even want to try moving it. If you think that extra force is necessary, best to brace the very bottom of the peg near the swivel joint and put less stress on the end of it. Then you can get it to move with hopefully without snapping. Pop out a fist accessory, plug in one of the weapon accessories. And again you can have a show accurate representation of RC with her gun weapons poking out of her wrists. Pew 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 pew! But certainly none of the common 5mm peg accessories will fit in either of the curled fist hands. And I don't recommend trying to force it. Ah. Take either of the blade accessories, and either of the swishy accessories. At the bottom of the blade you will see this slight protrusion, and a little groove at the bottom of the swishy accessory. The swish is meant to slide onto the blade and hold in place like so, and convey the impression that the blade is swishing with deadly energy. On the box, these swishies were depicted in transparent purple plastic, like the Energon Cube. But obviously it didn't make it to the final cut. 
It's made with matching plastic to the blade, which makes it look stupid. The Energon Cube accessory will appear darker in real life than it did on the TV show, but use any LED flashlight as a table, and you can place it on top and have the Energon Cube glow. <laughs> to transform RC. <laughs> RED line figures don't transform. Fooled, you fool! Anywho, for articulation, watch these narrow joints. It's all soft rubber, so if any of the tiny little plastic loops that hold these joints together break, the limb will break too, and no repair will be possible. But RC's head will rotate 360 degrees. There also feels like there's a joint section buried in here that should allow greater range of forward and backward motion. But her head only seems to tilt back very slightly and forward very slightly. Each shoulder will rotate 360 degrees and splay outward on a ball socket. The ball socket on the inside of the shoulder will also allow the shoulder to square in and out slightly. There is a swivel joint at the elbow for 360 degree motion. There is only a single joint at the elbow, which will allow the arm to bend forward 90 degrees, and also backwards 90 degrees. Ouch! Again, it's not recommended that you try to push the rotation too far. This single rotation joint could be brittle, and if the plastic in here fractures or cracks, then the arm is broken. This spiky sheath around the forearm feels like it's plugged into another separate rod on the inside. And it does kind of rotate, but not much. Because the wrists are pegged into the forearms, they will also spin 360 degrees in their sockets. And the tiny narrow joint at the end of each one will allow for rotation. Be very careful with these narrow joints. Underneath the loincloth, there is a rotation joint that will allow the waist to rotate 360 degrees. And looking under here, you will see that there is a rotation joint. This joint will rotate backwards, although it takes a little force. And be sure to brace the waist at the small of her back when rotating backwards. You will hear a click, but it does allow the upper body to rotate backwards. For those who want to pose her with her back arched. Why? It does also feel like it should crunch forwards, but it was even tighter and I haven't wanted to force it. There is a hinge and swivel combo at the hips, which is fairly standard. It will allow each leg to rotate backwards about this far. Rotate forwards about this far. And each leg will splay outwards. When you start to feel resistance, stop moving. This seam shows where the thigh rotation joint is. Each knee will rotate 360 degrees. There is only a single hinge joint in the knees. And you can see why. It's way too narrow and tapered to support a double joint. It will only rotate backwards just a little less than 90 degrees. And of course these knee spikes will prevent it from rotating forwards at all. These shin sections are one solid piece with no articulation or heel spurs beyond what's molded into it. And then there is this ball socket at the tip of these stiletto toes. Each one of these toes will rotate 360 degrees in that ball socket. And the hinge inside the ball socket will allow it to tilt forwards and downwards until you start bumping into the other parts. Since the knees are not double jointed and the ab crunch too stiff and the hip joints too inhibited by the loincloth, it always feels as if RC should be able to pose better but can't. I'd like her to be able to do some more dynamic knee crouching. I think I could have lived with thicker knees if it meant more durability and better range of motion. You are advised to treat RC delicately. And the use of figure stands to support more dynamic motion is well advised. For size comparison, here is RED series RC next to the Power of the Prime's Orthia Combiner. Here is R.E.D. Series R.C. next to Transformers Animated R.C. Here is R.E.D. Series R.C. next to Takara Tobi's Deluxe Nightbird. And here is R.E.D. Series R.C. next to Transformers Prime's First Edition Bumblebee. Blah. 
I still have my doubts about the R.E.D. series in general, especially with their use of materials. Giving up a transformation into alt mode might be worth it if the figure is both better in appearance and better articulated. I've not noticed this to be much of a benefit with the robot-enhanced design figures so far. Positives are that she is more complex looking compared to the almost childish toys from the original series. She does strongly mimic her on-screen appearance. She has a lot of detailing, and the colors and decal work seem neater. She has many accessories that you can use for display or just play. She has many articulation joints for good posability, and there is no transformation engineering to get in the way. Negatives mostly revolve around the poor choice this line has made with the materials. Just because your Star Wars Black Series, Marvel Legends Series, and Ghostbuster Plasma Series use this material, doesn't mean you have to use it for everything. The problems with this softer, flexible rubber plastic infests everything since that's what the figure is primarily made of. Some of the detail is blurry because the soft rubber doesn't do hard edges. Some of the coloring seems a bit off because the soft rubber doesn't paint as crisply. The soft rubber pegs and tabs that hold in the accessories seem spindly and weak, and necessitate extreme caution when swapping out hands and guns. Some of the joints spin too easily in their sockets, and because the joints are weaker, it always feels like you should be getting better range of motion out of the articulation. There are some action poses I'd like to try but can't, because I always worry that applying too much force to the rotation would end up splitting apart the joints. Overall, it just feels as if the figure should be able to do more than it actually does. Plus, the removable breastplate was just a weird choice. I like this figure, just because I liked the character. I wanted to score it higher for that reason alone, but the use of this lousy, weak rubber throughout the whole thing just drags it all down. Stronger plastic, double joints at the knees, better hip and neck motion, and this could have scored 9 or 10. But I'm afraid that I must give Robot Enhanced Design RC 6 out of 10 deaths. How's that for equal treatment? If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell them all, and tell me I'm your own.